I'm no coffee snob by any means. Any cup of coffee that's in my hand is a good cup of coffee as far as I'm concerned. But man, racetrack gas stations around where I live, some of the best coffee from a gas station you can get. If that's possible. All right, guys, so we're not talking about my cup of coffee today, although I, it really is a good cup of coffee, though. Honestly, my coffee rating scale these days is pretty much based on how much sleep I've had the night before. And I've got two babies in my house, so not a whole lot of sleep. So pretty much all coffee is good coffee. Today, we're going to be talking about cast iron versus ductile iron. All right, so one of the big differences right out of the gate is uh, ductile iron, uh, you can bend it. <laughs> you can bend it, you can shape it, you can work with it, you can use it in a mill shop. Whereas cast iron, uh, if you try to bend it and work with it, you're probably going to break it. It doesn't matter if you use heat or a torch, or, it really doesn't matter, it's, it's gonna break. It's, it's way more brittle than ductile iron is. Oh, this really is good coffee. So cast iron also corrodes a lot faster than ductile iron, mainly because cast iron, it's mostly made of carbon and silicone. So carbon is really what's gonna cause it to, to rust really quick. Anyone knows, if you've put cast iron outside for 24 hours and even just the morning dew ends up on it, you're instantly gonna start seeing that discoloration and rust and corrosion build up on that cast metal where if you had like a piece of steel laying next to it, the steel would look just fine. Preheating, ah, the great debate of preheating. Yes, preheating is something that uh, old timers will say, you gotta preheat cast iron. Always preheat your cast iron before you weld it. And yeah, you know what? It's not really gonna hurt, depending on how hot you get the metal, but really it's not needed. Uh, especially when we're talking about cast iron components like ornamental components from like King Metals or something like that. Really, those are designed uh, to be able to just put right in place and be able to weld into your railings or gates or whatever it is you're using them in. And that's the beautiful thing about those. One thing to keep in mind when you're welding these cast components to uh, just straight up steel like you would be in a railing or a gate or something like that, it does sound and look oh, different. But the most important thing for you to remember is the process is still the same. Now, even though I just said that preheating really wasn't that necessary, there is a caveat to that, and that is if you were in a very, very cold climate, right? So sometimes in my shop, it can get down to about 10 degrees in here, and that is really freaking cold, and I don't wanna be in here working when it's that cold, but sometimes you have to. And if you're working on cast stuff, then you might wanna preheat some stuff, but honestly, uh, I don't think you're gonna mind, because when it's 10 degrees, using a torch really isn't that bad of an idea. All right, so I'm gonna do one last thing before we go, just to, just, to, just to show you how brittle some cast iron really can be. All right, so this is just a, a cast iron decorative component I've ordered, and nothing wrong with it. It's, it's good, nice, nice component here. Uh, but I wanna show you how brittle these things really are. Uh, so I'm gonna do the drop test. Which really, I'm just gonna take it about chest high, and I'm just gonna drop it on the ground. And we're gonna see how it breaks. All right, here we go, you ready? All right, I'm gonna pan the camera down here for you so you can see that, there we go. All right, you ready? And three, two, one. Boom! Cast iron, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I hope that answers some of your questions about ductile versus cast iron and uh, some of the things to be aware of. Uh, as you saw, cast iron is a little fragile when you drop it, so be careful with your cast iron components, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's it for me. I'm Andy Fogarty for the At Home Welder, and this has been for KingMetals.com um, and my cup of coffee, not a sponsored post. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.